guys, welcome back to my channel. I am here today to film a kind of different video. Um, I asked on my Instagram if you guys wanted to know a bit more about cold water swimming because I have increasingly received a lot of DMs about it and I feel not, I guess, not partially responsible, but like I feel like I want to make a video with like safety tips and like information about it because I understand that like from posting on social media and just like looking like I go swimming all the time that's something that someone could think like oh I could just do that and I don't want to ever promote something that is like not safe or like that you haven't checked the proper protocol and everything in place because it's not as easy as just like hopping down to the beach one day especially if you live in a cold country so that's what I'm here to do today I've got some things written out that are, like tips and stuff and then I asked you guys for questions on Instagram and you guys got back to me which is really cool so like my swimming posts in the background, my one of my best friends drew this of me for my birthday, which is so cool. Um, so I would definitely include that in my thumbnail. But um, I, yeah, we'll just get started by saying, obviously I'm not an expert. I've lived by the sea for almost three years. I've swam in the sea for almost three years, as in like, obviously I swam as a child and stuff, but I've like taken on sea swimming as like an activity sport, I guess, um, only for the last three years. So these are just my tips i'm going to link down below the rnli and some other um really good resources for swimming in open water like safety precautions obviously please don't take this video just as the only advice you'll ever take to go sea swimming um i use the magic seaweed app to check my tidal times to find out about the wind speed and um if there's any pollution links you can also use what is it called surfers against sewage because like i live in a city so we do get runoff in um when there's really bad weather and it wouldn't be it, it would be safe but it wouldn't just necessarily be nice you wouldn't want to be swimming in the sea when there is runoff because there's a lot of human waste that goes into our sea unfortunately so those are the apps i use as well as i'm a member of a local facebook page so people ask me one of the biggest questions was like do you swim by yourself and i i never swim alone in the like outside of the summer months where it's like extremely safe and the beach is really busy if the beach is quiet which is like september through to june basically i never swim alone i i don't go to the beach by myself tom is not a huge um cold water swimmer he's a, a fair weather activity man he much prefers running in the winter so he will sometimes come with me and sit on the beach and i will swim um but he will be there but i'm also a member of a facebook group called our local one it's called the sort of seabirds um and there's them all over the country there's some cool girls on Instagram who I'll link down below who've started Facebook pages and stuff for swimming groups and I always recommend swimming with someone especially outside of the like prime good weather flat tide temperatures because you know it can get hairy out there we have things like rip tides we have lots of different things and this isn't to scare anyone just to be aware so yeah I never swim alone I always have either Tom with me on the beach I have a couple of girls like locally that I swim with and then if not, I will see like pre-COVID times and it's starting to start up again. There's like groups of women that go on particular times every day. Um, so even if I'm not like swimming to meet up with people because I quite like it as like a solo solitary activity, I um, will know that there's other people on the beach at the same time as me who will look out for me. I don't personally wear a toe bag. There are these like inflatable toe bags that lots of the people I know swim um, further out than me that they wear, um, which you can do your own research on those if you think that's something that you need, but I don't have one myself. So the first thing is why I swim, how I got into cold water swimming, why would you want to do that when in your house is nice and warm? <laughs> so I swim for lots of different reasons, but I think number one, it's for my mental health. So when I was first moved to Brighton, I was um, newly diagnosed with chronic illness and I was struggling with a lot of my mental health issues I think that were just coming to the surface after years of like ignoring them and I saw people swimming and it was having a really bad depressive episode that was going on like maybe five or six days uh like wasn't leaving the house wasn't washing wasn't doing anything like not functioning as a human being and I was talking to my therapist and she said have you ever thought about trying sea swimming and I did and I guess the rest is history so I started going I went every day for a week um that must have been like I can't remember what time of year it was I think it was quite cold like April maybe I think it was on my birthday and I just started to feel better I started to feel like myself I started to feel like it was something if I did nothing else that day as long as I went swimming I felt like I had accomplished something um 
I think that coincides a lot with illness and feeling like you're not productive or you're not worthy when you live in a body that's so unreliable and thankfully swimming is something I can do until I get to like the lowest 10% of my illness where I'm basically bed bound but for the 90 other percent of my life I can pretty much always swim even if Tom has to drive me to the beach and I can just walk down the steps or I take my wheelchair and I can get to the beach walk down and then I go like I, I will always find a way to make it work because it means so much to me to do it so yeah I swim I would say the number one reason I swim is for my mental health the second reason is I have a condition called EDS and comes with that is something called CCI cervical cranial instability so because of um, EDS is a condition where the it's a connective tissue disorder so all the bits that join me together don't work properly so um my head doesn't sit securely on my neck which means I experience a lot of pain I can't really explain the pain to anyone except it feels like I would like someone to walk around and hold my head for me that would feel so nice like holding up my own head is extremely painful <laughs> so the thing with swimming in salt water is there's a feeling of weightlessness your body is floating and with the um feeling of my head being so heavy when I swim I lose that feeling and it's like can be the only time in a week where I don't feel pain because of that um, feeling. That being said, this is a caveat to people who want to swim because of chronic pain, is that it can, extreme cold water swimming can interact if you have sciatica or nerve damage. I have um, nerve damage from EDS, so um, if that's really bad and I have neuro symptoms, which are like, um, when basically like the, the nerves that connect my brain together are like, fire and cause me sort of like stinging pain if you experience chronic pain you'll know that kind of pain the a neuro pain um from nerve damage that um it's going from like switching temperatures whether that's really hot to really cold or the other way around can be really painful and it's not advised so i definitely definitely say you have to start slowly that's my number one tip is start slowly start with um intermittent cold showers so i was from January until March, I didn't swim at all. I was too unwell, so I was just taking cold showers, which is, you can get some, so, so many of the um, positive impacts of cold water therapy through just cold showers. So you don't even need to go outside. Um, obviously, it's not like the same as being in nature and all those other things you get as a bonus, but it's definitely somewhere to start if you've never thought about cold water therapy. Um, some of the other, I will link some stuff below about cold water therapy in general, but it's about like um, regenerating your nervous system, giving your lymphatic drainage a chance to reboost. Um, and I can't explain how good it feels if you've never had a cold shower. So I would start with just hold, I have my shower and hot, wash my hair, whatever, hanging out. And then I would just stand under it and spin the dial to cold. And it sort of takes your breath away. And then I spin it back to hot. Then I might do that three or four times so I get these cold bursts. And that's how I start. Cold water swimming is not, in my eyes, or the people that I swim with, it's not a survival of the fittest. We're not here trying to do the triathlon or an Ironman or any of, and that's fine, <laughs> that's your thing, but that's not what I swim for and that's not what a lot of the people I meet swim for. Most people swim for mental health, illness reasons, you know, we're not, it's not necessarily an exercise thing. Someone else asked me how far do I swim out and, I mean, how how long is a piece of string that really depends on the day the weather but I'm not someone I think when I say swimming I'm more like I wrote a thing I wrote an article about um swimming for my mental health and I think I describe myself as a dipper because I really don't I'm not out there doing lengths for 45 minutes like it's it, you're not reproducing what you do in a swimming pool first you have the tides against you it's harder to swim in salt water like there's so many things that make it different to just swimming in a pool that I wouldn't be out there trying to replicate that that being said, there are people out there doing that when I'm there getting changed on the beach. You know, there's people going out in full wetsuit, goggles with their Apple Watch and they're pounding the waves. And I'm like, that's good for you. But that is not my thing. So I don't treat swimming. It's not even really exercise for me. Um, and it's definitely not a survival of the fittest. No, you don't get a medal for staying out the longest or for going in the least amount of clothes. Like it's, it's not a competition. <laughs> um, so the next thing to say is about the months I swim in. So contrary to popular belief because when I go down to the beach when I first started swimming when I moved here it was like September October and people were like you you are crazy like my friends who don't live by the beach obviously I'd like left in London and stuff but the sea is at its warmest in September because it's cumulative so it's had the whole you imagine it like like a bathtub sitting in the sun it's had the whole summer to heat up so it's warmer like September and October it's really quite warm it's like above 15 16 degrees I would say 
Um, obviously, this depends so ver ver very so much on where you live. Like I know Grace up north, and if you live in Scotland, I know that's going to be way different. Um, one of my best friends lives in Bristol, and she swims on the west coast of the country which I've never swam there before so I don't know what the temperature is like I only know my experience from the south coast and like when I'm on holiday I always try and like if we're driving somewhere I'll be like oh I'm gonna go for a swim anyway June to September 20 to 25 through that's when you'll see like people in my city like the non-sea swimmers the, the fair weather folk they'll be out the kids are swimming like people are having drinks on the beach the beach is buzzy like that's very much the summer where people are swimming and, and the sea is still cold and people are surprised that it's cold when they go in in the summer but that's definitely like fair weather swimming and in those months I tend to swim first thing in the morning when the beach is quiet because I like to go and like have my quiet time and not you know do other things and stuff or I swim in the evening if I'm gonna like swim with friends and have some wine on the beach sort of situation then from December so also in that period of time I can stay in the sea for anything from like 25 30 minutes because I'm used to it and also because it's warmer. From December until March, I would maximum would say I stay in the sea for five to six minutes. Like it drops down to, I think the coldest it gets is maybe five or six degrees, which like, I don't think you know how cold that is until you do it and put your feet in it. Like that is effing freezing. Um, and that's where we get into these hairy situations. And also in that, in those seasons, that's when the weather is bad. We have wind, we have poor visibility. We have um, riptide, all of those things tend to occur in the winter months when the sea is colder. So that's to be warned. And then about now, so what are we, end of April, start of March, start of May, it's about eight or nine degrees. So I would be swimming for like, and it's getting warmer. So I'm swimming, I would say like six to seven minutes and building up slowly. Whereas like I would say only in the last three weeks have I got back to swimming, maybe the last month um, after some time off with illness. So. I'm like building myself up slowly. So that's a general thing about the temperatures and how things are. And I'll tell you about the kit. So I bought like all my kit that I wear here. You don't need all of this to swim. You don't need to go out and spend all this money on all this stuff if you don't know if you're gonna like it yet. Like I've built this stuff up, like I say, for three years. Some of the stuff I only got this like in 2021 and I've been swimming all this time without it. These are just stuff that I use if you, want ideas or if you have people in your life that like to swim like these are good gifts this is just like a general situation so the first thing you would need is obviously a swimming costume um i got this one for christmas and i absolutely love it it's from batuku but and it's made from recycled plastic bottles and i see so many people in brighton wearing this one which makes me really happy like lots of other seabirds and stuff so they have loads of different de designs and most of the year until so i now wear something else but until um this March I only ever swam all year round in this and that's not like well done you're so smart and clever like that's I just didn't ever couldn't be bothered with the faff of a wetsuit there are people who swim in full length wetsuits who wear swimming hats there's all sorts of things but I was honestly only ever swimming in this and then I wear socks wetsuit socks so obviously the, the things that get coldest are the things that stick out your ears, your nose, your hands, your feet. That's what gets the coldest. So I wear these TWF wetsuit socks. They cost me about nine quid on eBay. I'll link them down below. They're two millimeter thick wetsuit socks. I live on a shingle beach. So these are not, um, they don't have anything on the bottom. So in the summer I actually wear, oh, I don't have them to show you, but I wear Teva sandals to swim in just because I'm already wearing them to the beach and they're waterproof. Tom wears these when he sea swims because he is, the princess he doesn't like the feeling of the rocks in between his toes so he has these which are like his old he used to surf when he lived somewhere else so he wears these and they are um like rubberized at the bottom so you can't feel the rocks under your feet i don't think they make i've worn them before i don't think they make that much difference to how warm your feet is but he likes that they're rubberized so if you live on a shingle beach like these are quite handy to have um then i wear gloves also from ebay like, I don't buy expensive kit because the chances that I would lose it um, are probably quite high, knowing me. And I just bought them to try them. So these are, again, wetsuit gloves. I really like these ones, actually, because my friend swims in, has a pen. She doesn't have the elastic. And I feel like the elastic's really helpful at keeping your hands in. And they make the biggest difference. I have nerve pain in my hands, so I don't think I'd be able to swim anymore if I didn't have these. But um, it's totally, like, just, like, individual. depends on what you feel like then my wetsuit which isn't really a wetsuit so 
as I say, in the summer, I will swim literally just in this. No gloves, no shoes, no anything um, from like about June onwards. But in the winter months, I got this for Christmas. I think I put it in a whole video. So this is a Billabong two millimeter short wetsuit. As you can see, it's like literally just there. It's not, you can have short down to the calves or you can have full length, but it's got long sleeves and a high neck. And I find this bit of me is what gets the coldest. So I got this on a discount website. It cost me about 50 quid, but they retail, I think, for like over 100, which is a big investment. But this absolutely changed the game for me. I'm not scared of going swimming in any temperature. Now I have this. I literally would take this to Iceland with Tom and go swimming in it. Um, so this was a good investment for me, but this isn't definitely like not an essential because someone else asked me, do you need a wetsuit? And that's that's really up to you. It's not like better or worse to have one or not have one. If you have one lying at home, try having a go with it. Often, like if you live in a city near where you can swim, there'll be people selling them on Facebook Marketplace. Um, I just like this one because it's it's really easy to dry. It's thin. It's like two. It's two millimeters, and it's um, I can hang it over the bathroom. It doesn't take up a whole lot of room. As if I was going to have like a bigger, chunkier one. It's very thin neoprene. So. That's what I wear. I've got friends who wear full length wetsuits. I've got friends who just wear a bikini all year round. Like it really doesn't matter. It's not, as I said, a survival of the fittest situation. Okay, then. This is probably the most expensive thing, but the biggest game changer. This, my friends, is a dry robe. So this is a coat. A coat that's incredibly bright, that can talk. No, Tom's gotten in my head recently. So as you can see, it's like fleece line, quick dry, long sleeve, and it looks like it's from your Ericsson football manager vibes. Like it zips all the way up and it's so baggy that you can put your arms inside yourself and use it as a changing room. Because the worst thing you want to do is, like some of my friends live like a 20 minute cycle from the beach and you, you should not under any circumstances on a cold day be getting out the water, sitting in a wet swimming costume and then cycling home in a wet swimming costume for over 40 minutes well before you get dry dry and warm that is not good <laughs> you don't want to do that so even though i live close to the beach i always take off my wet stuff at the beach under here so i will go to the beach in trackies my wetsuit or my swimsuit warm socks and i wear like sliders or birkenstocks and then after the beach i get changed and go commando trackies t-shirt like no i don't need the beach wearing anything wet and i have my coat on <coughs> they are expensive. Uh, my mum gifted them to me for like two birthdays ago. Tom has one as well, but they're absolutely game changing. And if you live in a city, you will see people wearing them as the like they are the coat of the beach. But you can also get some rip off like um, other brands have started coming out with them in recent years and they do make other ones. So do that research with what you will. And then my last essential, which is maybe not an essential, but it is to me, is my Hydro Flask, which is just a water bottle that um, keeps your liquids hot. So I make a flask of tea in here and I bring my enamel mugs, of course, mine are moving themed. Um, I have like four of these, but in the summer I use them for gin and tonics and in the winter I take my tea to the beach so I can have a drink afterwards with a friend. Like swimming, like I say, for me is my quiet, it's my reflective time and it's also time where I catch up one-on-one -on -one with someone and I chat and we drink a cup of tea and share a cake and... It's a lovely like ritual that I like to partake in. So those things are also essential to me, maybe not to you, but definitely a hot drink for when you come out of the sea um, makes a really big difference. I've got friends who bring hot water bottles. Also didn't show you here, but a bob, like a warm hat to put on. You can, in the winter, sometimes I even swim in a hat if my hair's tucked up. And then I would get to the questions. Someone says, how do you not panic? I swam in the 11 degree Pacific Ocean. I thought my heart might stop. So not panicking I, is about, um, it's about mindset, it's about thinking about what you're doing, why you're doing it, and the understanding that you are safe. So there's a person called Wim Hof, I will link some videos by them down below. They have a book, I have not read the book, but there's a specific breathing technique that they use that I, and most swimmers I know, use about, um, that helps you remain calm as you enter the water. And like I said, all the other tips are kind of applicable. It's not a competition. You can wear as many layers as you like. You don't need to impress anyone. You don't need to stay in for a certain amount of minutes. And the not panicking is just about reminding yourself that you're safe. So it, it's about reminding your body that you're safe, I guess. And that's why using this breathing technique will send things to your brain to tell you that everything's okay. My friend was really funny and says, do you wee in the sea? Of course I wee in the sea. I mean, I would deny anyone 
who doesn't think weeing in the sea is a handy thing to do you know especially post a glass of rosé and I've already been in for a swim I'll just pop back in and have a wee although don't ever sw don't go out swimming drunk there's a lot of people do that in Brighton and it's not safe um someone else said do I need a wetsuit I kind of answered that that's up to you that I showed you the one I wear I put friends who wear all different kinds of ones whatever floats your boat um someone said how far out do you swim I think I already said that so that depends on the day we have boys out in the summer so like um there's a marked swimming area in Brighton along the beach that stops uh boats coming in and jet skis and things like that so you can swim depending on tide you can swim back and forth to the boys um but yeah definitely stay closer to shore like the less confident you are i definitely don't go far out especially if it's wavy like i'm very happy to stay in the middle and then the last question someone said um rivers or lakes i live inland well my friends this is a pondery for me too because i think i'm leaving brighton temporarily um while tom goes away and i need to be near family for extra help and etc etc boring boring but i think i'll probably end up moving back to southwest london so i will be without my precious sea um so in the netherlands where tom lives we um he is like lives in the middle of the country so it's we don't can't get to the beach that easily so we swim in a local lake that's really cool i don't love swimming in lakes but that's personal preference like i just find the static water the stagnant water quite like I don't know, just, it just doesn't do it for me the same as the sea does, but that's absolutely an option. And then in London, I know I've been already researching, we've got Hampstead Ladies Pond, which is quite far away from where I will end up living, but that is an option as well as there's a few reservoirs now that open to public swimming. So I would do that. I have seen friends and know of people that swim in the River Thames up back near London, but I wouldn't personally just because of the pollution and the like debris and stuff I would want to know about that um before I did but like I said surfers against sewage and there's some other resources you can look into about the water quality of where you're swimming because that's really important especially if you want to swim in a city in a river in a stagnant body of water like you need to know about what's in there because you can end up contracting something nasty um but I will be on a swimming an inland swimming journey when I move back. So I will be bringing you guys along with me for that. But definitely any body of water, as long as it's safe, is worth a shot. Um, look out for your local swimming communities, do your research, never swim alone. And I think that's all my advice for this video. If you guys wanted to see anything else about swimming, then please leave it in the comments down below and I'll get back to you with more bookish videos, I'm sure, again soon. Bye.